Hello, my friends. May God bless. May God bless each one of you. May He bless you. And please, pay very close attention. When we, when we pray that God may bless you, I am not thinking about um, may God fulfill with your dreams. May God give you a lot of money. May God give you a lot of health. May God give you a wonderful family. May God um, roll a red carpet for you to walk upon. No, it's not this. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. But this is not my focus. My focus is the following. That the main blessing of God, the main blessing, the greatest blessing of God is that you may be honored that you may be honored by him by god this is the greatest blessing and how can we be honored by god when we receive the holy spirit when we are baptized with the holy spirit when when the glory of the second house comes upon our lives the glory of god which is the holy spirit when it comes upon our lives then you are blessed that's the blessing that i seek for you that i ask god on your behalf because if this blessing does not happen in your life then all the other blessings they are going to be lost this is what the lord jesus said what profit is it if you win, if you conquer the whole world and you end up losing your own soul? Because this is how I used to think when I was young, when I was studying. I was about to enter in university. I was doing a course, preparing myself to university. I was working during the day, studying in the evening. And you can imagine, you can imagine, you know, the, the, the fight that we were going through at that moment to conquer, you know, a good place in life. Because I could not expect to receive an inheritance from my parents because they had nothing. They had absolutely nothing apart from the apartment where they used to live. And if you would divide that for seven children, there wouldn't be much left for me. So I did not have much expectation. I was not expecting much for someone to help me. But I had inside of me a dream, as every human being has a dream. All of us, we have a dream. And my dream was to study, get married, form a family, and have a life that... It's comfortable. That's when the Holy Spirit enlightened my mind, my understanding. He opened my understanding. He opened my eyes. He enlightened my eyes so that I could understand the project that He had for me, the plan that He had for my life. When I thought like that, in the things that were physical, material, in achieving, conquering the world, the Holy Spirit made me understand the words of the Lord Jesus, His Holy Son, when He said, What profit is it if you win, if you conquer the whole world? And this is impossible. But if that was possible, to conquer the entire world and lose your soul, the world is worth nothing riches they're worth nothing family health wealth achievements all these things would be left behind all these things they stay behind but when we enter into the kingdom of heaven that's it the kingdom of god inside of you have you thought about this my dear friend have you thought about this think with me just a little bit imagine the glory of god inside of you, within you, guiding your thoughts, guiding your ideas, your dreams. 
guiding your life, then <laughs> you have to break through. You must break through because the Almighty God is there or is there fulfilling His dream through your life. So, when, when we meditated yesterday here about the dream, the dream of Hannah, she wanted to have a child. And why did she want to have a child? Because she had everything. She was more loved than the other wife of her husband. She had everything. She was more considered than the other, but she was lacking to be fulfilled as a, as a mother, to have a, a child. And I think, I think that she was looking at the children of Nina, the other wife of her husband, and she would think, I would like to have children as well. I would like to have this, this joy. And she already had the love of her husband. But God, obviously, He guides our thoughts. He guides when we fear the Lord. Then He guides our thoughts in a way that is right, in a way that is correct. And He allowed her to be humiliated by her rival. And humiliated and provoked and humiliated every single day. Until the moment that she stopped to, to wait on people, counting on her husband, counting on her own strength, she sought the Lord. This was the secret of Hannah. Hannah sought the Lord. And this is what many people Unfortunately, they have not been doing to seek the Lord, to seek the glory of God, which is the Holy Spirit. So, when she went through that, when God allowed that to happen to her, she, he allowed her to suffer and to get to that point, to get to the peak of her pain, to the uh, bottom of her, of the pit, He allowed that so that she could take from inside of her, from the deepest of her soul, a, a sincere and true cry out. Because sometimes there are people who cry out, but it's just there on the lips. And nothing, nothing happens. But God allowed her to get to, to the bottom to reach rock bottom in terms of humiliation and she was not uh, she was not counting on the priest that was there no she did not ask for the help of anyone no oh, pray for me no it was her she was there herself who presented herself to God and presented her true offering to God Because in physical aspects, she had, her husband had given to her double portion of conditions, physical conditions of offerings for her to please God more than Penina. Because she had more, Hannah had more. She had double the portion that Penina had received, but the offerings, they were not enough. Because... To present an offering just for the sake of doing without placing your heart, your soul, is not going to solve the problem. And this is what many people are trying to do. They present offerings and big sums of money there on the altar and then they leave They come out from the altar, they go down the altar proud, saying, I gave, I presented this, I did this to God. And God 
and, and they don't know that God has turned his face to them because that offering was useless. That offering was not an offering that was pleasant to him. No, it wasn't. It was an offering, but it was not pleasant to him. I would like you to understand this, my dear friend. Because it's pointless for us to put all of our strength on the altar if our heart is far from the altar. Is it true or not? Let's speak the truth here. Because if it was like this, the Lord Jesus would not uh, devalue the world when he said, what profit is in it if you conquer the whole world and use your own soul? So if I get the whole world and I put the whole world there on the altar, would I save my soul? No, I wouldn't. No, not necessarily. So the offering, the offering obviously speaks on behalf of the offering giver. The offering speaks on behalf of the soul of the offering giver, but not always. Not always this happens. Why? Because the offering giver, at times, he presents the, the offering, but he does not present the, the soul. Because to present an offering is easy. You give it today and tomorrow you're receiving more. You have more. The altar will not owe anything to anyone, but the soul, the soul on the altar. Well, Hannah, Hannah, she went to the altar. She went there with her soul. She tore her soul down. You can read there in the scripture. Pay close attention to the prayer of Hannah, how deep it is. She said there, O Lord of hosts, that means, O, o God, the Lord of hosts of, of the angels, the God Almighty, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant, <laughs> the offering, the offering that Anna was presenting there was her affliction. It was her pain. It was the humiliation. She had the offering that the husband had given to her for her to present on the altar, but the greater offering that she presented there was her pain, the humiliation that she was going through. And God allows these things to happen to us. God allows these things to happen to me. And He allows it to happen to you, my friend. I don't know what is your pain, what is the humiliation that you're going through, but... I don't know what is your, your pain, what makes you sad, but I know, I know that many people who are listening to me right now and they have a pain, a bitterness within their soul that is hidden there that no one knows about, only them and God. And this bitterness is what they should place there, present there on the altar. This sadness, she said, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant. The affliction of your maidservant. She did not say, if you will indeed uh, look at the offering. Look at the offering that I'm presenting to you, God. It is double the offering of my rival. No. No. She was presenting to God... Her heart that was afflicted. If you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me. But God does not forget about anyone. God does not forget anything. But in that moment, she said, if you remember me, I know that you know all things, Lord, but remember me. Have compassion on me. And not forget and not forget your maid servant look here look here her, her humility this was something that was humble because indeed she was a servant of god but will not forget your maid servant but 
will give your maidservant a male child. Then he presents there her requests. First, she said, uh, she presented there the offering, uh, her soul that was there, humbled, afflicted. She was presenting her soul that was uh, afflicted, humbled, that was downcast. She was pouring out her soul like water there on the altar. Then she said, but we'll give your maidservant a male child. It could be a daughter. No, I want a male child. Why? Why do I want a male child? Because I want to offer this male child on your altar that he may serve you, that he may honor you, that he may do what I could not do, that he may be a servant of yours. Look how amazing. That means she placed... She placed herself on the altar. She poured out her soul there on the altar, humbled. She was asking God to give her a male child so that this child would be able to serve him, would be able to honor the Lord. So look at this prayer. Pay attention at this prayer. What a prayer. What a request. So you can see here, my dear friend, what pleases God. You can see here what pleases God. Sometimes you think that to please God is to put money on the altar. Sometimes the pastor thinks that to please God is to work a lot and to be there the whole day in the service, helping the people. Of course, this is one of the types of the offerings, but the offering if it's not followed by the soul. Remember, the first great commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your, your thought, with your mind. That means for you to, to place Him, to put Him above everything, to give the honor to the only one who is worthy of honor and no one else. And this was what Hannah did. And in order to complement her prayer, her prayer of affliction, and to, to pour out her soul there on the altar of God, she asked, I want a male child so that that male child could serve the Lord, Noah, in her place naturally, for all of his life. Because if you give me, Lord, a male child, no razor, no razor shall come upon his head. His hair will grow and grow and continue growing. Because this is how it was determined that he would serve the Lord. And this is what happened to Samson as well. The mother of Samson offered Samson to God. But Samson, he ran away. He ran from the plan of God. He escaped from the plan of his mother. But not Samuel. Samuel was faithful. So, she said there, If you will give your maidservant a male child, then I'll give, I'll give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. That means she was decisive that the child that she would receive, she would surrender. And the scripture says, and it happened as she continued praying before the Lord. She was there persevering, continued praying there. It was her and God, God and her there. That... Eli, the priest, the prophet, watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. But her voice 
was not heard. Only God was hearing what she was saying because the voice the, the voice was not coming out of her mouth, but was coming from deepest of her heart, from the depths of her heart, from the depths of her pain, of her humiliation. She was there speaking to God from the deepest of her heart, truly, sincerely from her heart. Hannah, in her heart, she was speaking to God. In her heart, she spoke. Only her lips moved, but... Her voice was not heard. <laughs> and the scripture says there that Eli, the, the, the priest, took her, uh, thought that she was drunk because she was just there moving her lips. And he said to her, how long will you be drunk? Look here, she was misjudged. Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. She did not fight with the priest. She did not defend herself. She just said what was happening there. No, my Lord. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. And, he's, and, and she said to him, she said this to the priest. My dear friend, this prayer here should be repeated by all of those who are listening to me and are right now with their soul completely poured out before men pleading with with politicians with people pastors and other people you know, uh, and the brothers of faith oh help me pray for me help me oh please pray for me it's like you are with a little pot there begging people to have mercy on you and to give you something my dear friend learn how to pray let's learn how to pray how to pray the prayer of Hannah as Hannah prayed because this prayer is infallible by obligation God has to answer you're not going to die until you see this prayer being answered by God you can be sure of that we are not going to die until we see this greatness happening being fulfilled in your life and that's what happened because Hannah she bore a male child one year later when the son was weaned he was given to the priest and even though that priest was a bad priest she was not looking to what the priest would do or not if the priest was unfaithful to God, if the priest was a liar, if the priest would ignore the wrongdoings of his own children when they were doing justice, she was not worried about that because he was a representative of God and that's it. Here's my son, he is wind now, and now we can prepare him to serve God. And what did God do? God removed that priest that was unfaithful and put her children there to replace him. <laughs> this is wonderful. This is great. And this, <laughs> and then I remember when we're speaking yesterday that the Lord Jesus prophesied and said, it was well said and prophesied by Isaiah regarding regarding you hypocrites because the hypocrites, they like to present the world there on the altar a lot of things there on the altar they want to show off they want to show off the offerings they are presenting on the altar should be praised by others by even by the other priests the lord jesus said it was well prophesied by isaiah about you hypocrites as it said there these people draw near to me with their mouth they speak, but their heart is far from me. And this was exactly 
And this is exactly what Hannah teaches us. She was a woman who was afflicted, but she left for us this amazing teaching that God is pleased with those who have a heart who is surrendered, sincere, truthful, a heart that has no wax in it, a heart that is not full of pretense, but a heart that is truthful, pure. This is the faith that pleases God. This is the offering that pleases God. This is the offering that honors God. This is the faith that honors God. The faith that honors God. If you learn to honor God, if you honor God, he says, the ones who honor me, I'll honor them. But those who despise me, they are going to be despised, lightly esteemed. It's give and take. And this depends on each one of us. I cannot honor God on your behalf and you cannot honor God on my behalf. Each one has to honor God on their own behalf because it's our own soul. And our soul is individual. There are pastors, many pastors, who conduct themselves in a wrong way. And is that problem before God? I have with me, I have my own conscience with me. I have to take care of my own offering of my heart. We speak, we teach, but we cannot make decisions on behalf of anyone. Everyone has to make their own decisions and make their own choices. These people honor me with their lips, which is easy. They honor me with their physical offerings, and this is easy. But their heart is far from me. And this is where the greatest problem lies. This is the main problem, the greatest problem that has in most of the churches, hypocrisy. And I'm really sorry about that. But this is the truth we can see now in the Old Testament. It's, that is shown clearly. My dear friend, take care of your soul. Your offering has such a power like my own offering. Your offering, your prayer has as much power as my prayer. When you pray, when your prayer, like my prayer, it's presenting to God our soul before the altar. And this is what really matters. Do you understand? Honor God and He will honor you. For sure. Nothing will impede him from honoring you. But now, you must first honor him. May God bless you all. And tomorrow you're going to be back here once again. This month, don't forget, this month is the month to honor God. It starts today, the 1st of June. We start today and we are going to be speaking about this subject. We're going to be insisting throughout this whole month about this subject so that people may learn how to honor God, so that they may learn to take possession of the honor of God, to be honored by God. May God bless you all. See you tomorrow. Praise God.